If you wonder how to use these sticks, what they're even good for, I'm going to show you some hacks that no one talks about. The first hack I've got for you is an incredibly quick, easy, and clean way of mixing colors to the consistency you desire. And there are several ways to do it too. The first one is to wet your mixing tray like this and just rub the stick into the water. Literally, it takes seconds to go from a watery to a much thicker mix of paint. And how convenient is that when you need to mix colors fast in the middle of a wet and wet background? I almost gave up on this painting before even starting because I don't paint a lot of portraits to begin with and watercolor sticks are new to me, so it was reassuring to see they're so easy to use. Something worth mentioning is that with sticks, there's no rinsing the paintbrush between colors either, which is really nice. And I was really impressed with that first hack and I find that it feels fun to mix colors in this way and it's really easy to add another color to the mix too. I'm using Daniel Smith Sticks, it's my favorite brand right now, so it was an easy choice, but it's still hard to trust the techniques with something that is so different than normal watercolors. When I think at how it is with tubes and pans, the mixing feels so much easier to do though. There's also less risk of wasting any paint. And it feels so comfortable switching from one color to the next. To the point, I found another way to make quick color mixes as I was painting. And that second option is to just wet your stick directly in a water jar and go make the mix from there, which saves even more time since you won't have to pre-wet the mixing tray. Stamping or even rolling the watercolor stick on wet paper is one of the most creative hacks you can use. To do this, you'll need to pre-wet the stick by dipping it in your water jar. This is an example of stamping since I wanted a slight bokeh effect on my background here. And the advantage of this technique is you can create fun effects quickly. You could decide to create abstract or blurry tree trunks on this background by rolling a portion of the stick you cut out from the rest. Something I saw happening in my background and that you want to be aware of is this technique will leave harsh painting marks even after rewetting the sheet because it's a lot of concentrated pigment that comes out at once. It is also a hack that should be used occasionally because watercolor sticks don't go any faster than regular watercolors in tubes or pants, but if you're to use them in that way a lot, they will. The sticks also get messy fast after you start dipping them in water, so make sure to have a rag or a paper towel nearby. Thankfully, the most common way you'll be using your sticks while painting will be when they're mostly dry with this next hack. To wet the tip and just get the paint you need with a paintbrush is a very simple hack to use with watercolor sticks. I know that's the one I want to use the most because I like my paintings to look smooth and this type of hack is what makes those sticks resemble normal watercolors the most. What I love about this compared to working from a mixing tray is it's very convenient to quickly switch colors and add last minute touches of specific color, especially when you don't need a large quantity to justify mixing a whole puddle of paint. You are able to get enough pigment that the color will show, but still, because you can also use a paintbrush, it's easy to control how that will come out on paper. This hack works best after your base layer was already painted and you really want to add colors somewhere, or maybe later in the process when you work on small details. You'll notice in this video that I arranged each hack to fit my painting process in order, so it can give you a good idea of when to use what hack. Another hack you can use with watercolor sticks is to lift the color off the sheet while it's still wet, and there are several ways to do that. You can do it with watercolors too, but it's worth pointing out that you can do that with a stick too. And here I'm doing it on wet paper and paint with a paper towel, but you could also just wet the area you want to lift on dry paper and remove some of the paint with a towel. You can also use a paintbrush to do that, it's really just like regular watercolors. Some brands and some colors within one brand don't lift as well as others. I usually don't have problems and that goes for these Daniel Smith colors I'm using today. You can draw directly with your sticks on wet paper and that one really makes me think of watercolor pencils. I find this hack works really well with watercolor sticks in particular, and that's because a hefty quantity of highly concentrated paints comes out of the stick when it touches a wet surface. 
So for instance here, I'm painting the leaves and it's really nice to be able to add plenty of them in record time and know that they're going to show that the colors will stay vibrant. With regular watercolors, we would have had to prepare a thick mix and still it wouldn't have been concentrated enough in my experience compared to what I'm seeing here or it would have spread out too much. And what's great is nothing prevents us from using a paintbrush after this to add other colors in the leaves or add small details. It's the rapid back and forth between colors and techniques I really enjoy with those sticks and if you're able to get a few of your favorite colors to try, I totally encourage you to. An interesting hack is to swatch the color directly on a scrap piece of paper with a stick. And then you can activate that with a paintbrush. I find it's a good option to try out a color mix before creating the actual mix in the mixing palette. And it's probably because I'm a bit weird with that sometimes where I don't like to have unnecessary mixes of paint in my color palette. I find it confusing. And for the skin color, I know that red, yellow, and blue are a perfect match for it, but it's always safe to try it out. To avoid any waste, we can just use our mix, if we like it, to paint a base layer on this face, for example. And I know in this painting that it will be fast to mix some more later in a tray if I need it. Layering is a well-known technique in watercolor and art in general, and since those sticks are so versatile, this is a technique you can try. Now I think the safest option is to do it from color we have mixed in the mixing tray or on our scrap piece of paper for swatches. You can also pick up the paint directly from the stick with a wet paintbrush like I showed you earlier. What I mean is I would avoid using the stick directly on paper, especially here since skin is supposed to be smooth. When I thought of doing this video and I was brainstorming all the hacks, I already knew that I needed to try and color directly with a stick and then activate that paint because I've done it before with watercolor pencils. So let's see how that compares. This hat is red all over and pops off the page being so bright on my reference photo. So it seemed like it was going to be a safe way to try it there. And the verdict is at fine. It's not easy to draw with a stick because it's hard but at the same time, it's soft compared to a watercolor pencil, for instance, and the lines are thick, like an oil pastel. That's why if you try this, you want to avoid small details like drawing fine facial features. It's better to keep it for large areas like the hat. I like that because this is concentrated pigment, the color looked very, very opaque and vibrant when I wet it. It's great for that part of the hat, but to avoid having a solid color on something, you might want to add some water to create a, some kind of a gradient of color. A bit like the stamping method we used in the beginning, in the background, there's almost too much pigment here, more than we need since this is watercolor, it's not gouache or oils. So I would keep this hack idea for adding a very opaque layer of paint somewhere in particular when you need it. Something you might want to know is the lines I made dissolved really well. So unlike how watercolor pencils can act sometimes where you see pencil lines showing, I'd say the sticks are much easier to work with. Something to try with another brand to compare. This hack is fun to try because those sticks are neither very hard to cut nor do they crumble under pressure, which is good. And at the same time, it's hard to have a very sharp edge out of it but it can be handy to use this method for different reasons. That's what I'll show you with the next two hacks. In this example I'm going to show you, you're going to see we're able to draw thin lines with a sharp edge. You can see, however, that the texture of the paper shows through. These are not neat lines and we don't want too much pigments like I added in the hat earlier. But what I like is that blending this feels easy and you're still free to decide to leave a bit of texture or blend the paint really well. I could remove it all if I wanted to, but I decided I want the lines showing here since it's hair. The main hack that I saw that other videos were talking about a lot was how you're able to cut a piece of stick and actually repurpose it in a pan to use it as a watercolor in pants. You can even just reuse bits from the sticks like the ones I cut earlier. And personally, I'm fine with that because these watercolor sticks really do seem to act like my paints and tubes. And I also bought my favorite colors, so there will be no waste. 
The value in using this hack is not just the much better price for a stick that will last forever, it's also that you can carry a water clay stick around so easily compared to tubes. With our 12th hack, we're back to what I love the most about watercolor sticks, it's how easy and fast it is to get color out of them in the right consistency. Here for instance, there are strong shadows in the hair. I'm lazy, so naturally I had to mix a dark brown directly from two sticks, brown and black, and it works really well. It's just the best and quickest way to get an opaque look in the shadows of the hair I find. And normally I would have to go dig out pigment out of my pants and make a thick mix, but here it's really fast. And I know for sure this is as opaque as I can get it to be given the tiny amount of water in the paintbrush. I would avoid this technique in the early lightest layers of a painting or if I'm not sure about the color I need. Otherwise it's just really convenient. I'm excited to show you this praying water hack as in this painting in particular, it's really great for the looks I was going for on the coat. Those patterns on the coat are very obvious, but just drawing them without doing much else would be boring. And one way to spice things up is to spray water. I like it in this exact case because it helps making the looks of those lines a bit more realistic. And it also adds a very subtle base layer on the coat. And again, notice how quickly it's done for that whole entire area in the painting. Be careful with sprayed water just because there's a lot of it coming out. I used a paper towel to remove the excess. We saw with watercolor sticks that we can get a hybrid look by partially activating the lines like we did in the hair. And here again, we're getting that hybrid look after spraying water. I like to emphasize and complete that look by adding soft and smooth paint that I'm getting from the sticks once again. You can really see how fun and quick it is to use all the hacks from the video. To me, it was like a fun game that I think anyone would get comfortable with quickly when using watercolor sticks for the first time, especially if they have experience with watercolors. And here, as long as you don't do a lot of back and forth on top of the lines you drew prior to activating the paint, you'll be able to keep that hybrid look and enhance it by adding smooth shadows. I'm gonna admit that this hack is a little bit to the extreme, but that's one of the things I like about making YouTube videos. I get to try things that I otherwise wouldn't push myself to try. Grab a very sharp knife or cutter and design a shape on one tip of the watercolor stick. Then we will wet the shape and just tamp the paper with it. My first try was with the moon, but it was unknown territory, so I'll tell you what works with this second design now I know what I'm doing. You want to use the flat side of the stick, the one you have not used yet. That would normally be the top of the stick. Design as big of a shape as you can inside so it's easier for you to carve. This one is a star. The next step is to take up as much as you can all around so only the shape sticks out. And that's where I wasn't doing it right earlier. You want to wet the shape enough with your paintbrush that it's easy to stamp with. If not wet enough, it will be tough. You know it's good when the color you wet looks milky compared to the rest of the stick. Press well, and not just in the center, but on the sides too, so that shape comes out clearly. It is much better for me now than when I did the moon. Probably not the easiest way to use watercolor sticks, but why not? And you could even sign your work with it if it's just initials. I was also thinking we can also wet the flat tip of a stick, then rub it against the real stamp to add color, and then just stamp with watercolor. It will be fast and easy to do. And you could even add more than one color. The two color quick stamping or mixing hack is fun but messy. Press two damp sticks together like this and you end up with two colors on one end. I find it's fun to add texture with it. Or simply mix these colors right there on the stick like I showed you earlier. Something with watercolor sticks that is very easy and fast to do is to use pressure for texture. This is an example of how to add that texture and it can be done with one or more colors. At first I wanted to leave that scarf plain red, but it looks more fun to use the effect I created with the previous hack. By pressing the damp stick on paper, we're able to deposit enough color that it is bold and gives a texture effect. I don't have a white stick, I know Daniel Smith has one, and I might just get it because I think this technique will be fantastic for adding bright and bold highlights, so remember that one. 
like layering, glazing is another technique we use commonly in watercolors and because those watercolor sticks are so versatile, once again, you can use them just like your normal watercolor and get all the watercolor fun hacks plus more hacks that are specific to watercolor sticks. So for glazing, it's better to work with a smooth paint mix. This means for this, I recommend to use a paintbrush either by dipping it in the mixing tray or by getting colored directly from a stick. The colors turn out the same and just as transparent as watercolor. Look how we go to a plain red color to more of a reddish orange tone by just glazing yellow on top. With sticks, we can also add splatters and the best way to do it efficiently is to work from a puddle of paint that you have mixed before. For splatters, you really need something liquid. Picking up the paint directly from the stick won't work here. The paintbrush needs to be loaded in paint and then we can flick the tip and add splatters on paper. If you watch my videos, you know that I love to add highlights and I really wish I had that stick, that white stick to do it. But I do have another hack that you can use and that is to combine watercolor sticks to other mediums and we'll use white gouache here. That's going to be the best anyways in my mind to create highlights of all intensities. A white gel pen works fine too, but the highlights will be sharper. And I like that with gouache in a portrait like this, it's easy to rearrange the shape of a feature like the nose to something more accurate. It's convenient too to finish those hair strands and add a bunch of hair flying around the face. If you're wondering how watercolor pencils compare to watercolor sticks, you can watch this video next. I'm glad the portrait turned out okay. The resemblance is not 100%, but it's decent. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.